Hello everyone. Success series is back with another video and today we are going to discuss the chapter 1 that is resources and development for CBSC NCERT class 10. Okay so this is the overview of the topics we are going to cover in this first one is resource the introduction second classification of resources third resource development fourth sustainable development fourth resource planning resource planning in india conservation of resources and last but not the least agenda 21 Okay so first and foremost what is a resource everything that surrounds you in nature whether it is living like flora fauna animals humans even bacteria or dead like soil air water is a resource okay a resource is what is valuable to human and satisfy their needs in direct form or after resource development In order for an object to become a resource it must satisfy these three criteria. First it should be economically feasible. Economically feasible here means that you should not put in too much money to it to become a resource. For example in order to give electricity to a large building we cannot use solar energy as a resource because solar cell panels has silver lining which will make it a very expensive resource to be used second culturally acceptable for that an example will be as for example tiger skin or wildlife hunting would be a resource for some individual but it won't be culturally acceptable in our country so such resources cannot be considered third one is technologically accessible for using the water to conduct electricity we need dams shafts generators without this water cannot be a source so technology is also an important fact now let's discuss the classification of resources classification of resources are done on four bases the first two are on the basis of origin on the basis of exhaustibility on the basis of ownership and last on the basis of status of development okay first on the basis of origin resources are broadly classified into two categories first is abiotic resources and second one is biotic resources abiotic resources are those which are obtained from non living things okay like rocks metals the soil the land the air the water all comes in abiotic resources second one are the biotic resources bio means life So biotic resources are those which are obtained from living organism even human being is a biotic resource for our nature this is a formal definition abiotic resources are usually obtained from lithosphere atmosphere and hydrosphere examples of abiotic factors are water air soil sunlight and minerals the second one is biotic biotic factors are living ones or once living in the ecosystem they are obtained from biosphere and capable of reproduction examples of biotic factors are animals birds plants fungi etc the next classification is on the basis of ownership okay these are classified into four categories the third one is missing but these are classified into four categories first is individual resources community owned resources national resources and international resources So the individual resources is the one which is individually owned by private people or what you can say is a private property of an individual for example the plots the houses their own wells or even the farming land the second one is the community owned resources these are the one which are owned by members of a community or which is by owned by group of people for example the village common well the picnic spot the graveyard the playground these all come in community owned resources this is the formal definition of individual resources and community owned resources the next one is the national resource okay national resource is the one which is attained and obtained by a nation for example in india the national resources will be its railways the indian national railways or their roads like for example gt road is a national resource the second one is the international resource the oceanic resources outside the 200 kilometers 
of exclusive economic zone belongs to the international resources as they doesn't come under any individual nation. Next is on the basis of exhaustibility. On the basis of exhaustibility, the resources are broadly classified into renewable and non-renewable resources. Renew means to generate themselves in a geological time which is very, very feasible and acceptable. Renewable resources are the ones who doesn't get exhausted. The example of renewable resources are wind, geothermal energy, water energy, biomass, solar energy. Okay, on the other hand, non-renewable energy are those which can be generated, but it takes a lot, a lots of thousands of years and that time is not feasible. So once it gets exhausted, they will not be available to the future generations. So we must use these ones very judicially. The example of these resources are oil, coal, natural gases, nuclear and all the fossil fuels. This is the formal definition. Renewable resources are the ones which can be renewed or reproduced by physical, chemical or mechanical processes. And they are also called as replenishable resources. Examples are oxygen, fresh water, solar energy, timber and biomass. The non-renewable are the ones who take very long geological time. Some of the resources are like metals are recyclable and some like fossil fuels cannot be recycled and get exhausted. On the basis of status of development, there are four classifications. First one is the potential, second one is the developed, third one is the reserves and fourth one is the stock. Okay, so the first is potential resource. The potential resource is the one which we have in abundant, but we are not utilizing it to its full capacity. The developed resources are the, those which are quantitatively and qualitatively surveyed in order to get it used up to its full potential. The reserves are the one which can be used as the technology is present, but we do not use them up to their full potential and the stock are the ones which are available to us but cannot be used due to the absence of technology. This is the formal definition of stock, resource, potential and developed resources. What is resource development now? Okay, all the resources we have in nature cannot be used directly. Some of them need to be modified according to the human needs. For example, the land cannot be used directly by the farmer. They have to first clear it and then plow it. So the process of transforming a raw resource into a polished resource come under the category of resource development. Next is problems created by indiscriminate uses of resources. So when we use the system or resources randomly without systematic planning, then the resources get exploited, which is called indiscriminate use of resources. And they can have following consequences like uneven distribution of resources, global warming, floods, land degradation, rising level of pollution and ozone layer depletion. So to overcome all these, we must focus on sustainable development. So what is sustainable development is that who fulfill the needs of today's generation without compromising the ecological balance of nature and without exhausting these resources for the future generation. When we have an equilibrium of economic growth with social stability and conserving the environment, we get a sustainable development. Here are a few examples of sustainable development. For example, if you use solar energy, it's an example of sustainable development. We use wind energy, it's also an example of that. Crop rotation. Crop rotation is rotating different crops in an organized manner or systematic manner in the same farm so that the land did not get deficient in any particular resource. And the last one is green space. Green space are the areas like amusement parks where there is a lot of greenery and it is a source of economic growth and development also. So what is resource planning? The resources are distributed in our country in an uneven manner. So one place get a plenty of something and other has a scarcity of it. So in order to bridge the gap, we need resource planning. Resource planning in a country is required for the judicious use of resources. 
Resource planning in India is done in three step format. First is identifying inventory of resources. This contains that which state has which resource in abundance and which in scarcity. You have to have an ordering of everything. The next is economic and technology evolution. Here we just calculate that the necessity amount of economic facility and technology should be available to us to develop the resource and last is matching resource development plan that is keeping in track the growth in development which they had made planning for beforehand. Conservation of resources includes both the protection and rational use of natural resources so that they don't get exhausted for the future generation. Some of the examples of the processes we can do to conserve the resources. First is afforestation. Afforestation is planting more and more trees and pursuing the process like one Mahotsav day in order to increase the greenery. Second is mixed cropping and crop rotation. Third, protecting wildlife. Fourth, utilizing renewable sources of energy like wind energy, solar energy and Avoiding using fossil fuels or non-renewable sources of energy. Fourth is recycle the waste and last one, rainwater harvesting. Last but not the least, we're going to discuss today's Agenda 21. So the Agenda 21 is signed by United Nation in 1992 in a meeting of Earth Summit held in Brazil. So the basic motive of agenda is to combat environmental damage, poverty and disease through global cooperation and mutual needs and interest and by sharing responsibilities. This is the half of the chapter done. In the next slide, we'll discuss land as a resource, soil, land deformation, soil erosion and types of soil. Till then, you can see all these videos of success series for help. If you like the video, hit the like button and for more such videos, do subscribe to our channel, Success Series Education. Thank you.